you want to expand your landscape and you don't want to break the bank, well today I'm going to show you just how to do that. What you want to do is look for this semi hardwood and when you prune the hydrangea back like this, it's just going to put two more stems on and go. So what you want to look for is like right in here and cut just below those two leaf nodes. And let's pinch those two off and cut it right here. Now, you have two options on this. You can use these two uh, bottom leaf nodes. That's where your most con concentrated differentiated root cells are. So you can use those or you can just cut below and not use those. But once you get to that point, cut your leaves so that your cutting looks like this. That's what we'll use to propagate with. And these, and the ones you seen me start with, I don't know how many cuttings it'll be, but if somebody offers for you to come trim back their hydrangea bushes and you wanna make more plants, Take advantage of it. This is one of the top cuttings. You see, we don't have the bottom nodes on it and it's getting a little flimsy because what you really want is the semi hardwood. That's best for cutting, but we're not gonna throw these away. You know, we may get some of them to root in. That's just extra plants we get. So we're gonna give them a try. So I'm gonna go through here and get all these cuttings ready. And then we're gonna carry the propagation frame that I use to start them. Alright, so once you get all your cuttings done and they're like this, the next step that I do is I dip them in a rooting hormone. Now, this is not really necessary, but look at it like this. If you got an 80% chance of these rooting in and you use rooting hormone and it gives you a 95 to 98%, would you want to use it? But I know people who does not use a rooting hormone and they get them to root. So, but when I started learning how to do this, I used a rooting hormone and my success rate was real high and it's hard to move away from it. So now we got all these in, we're gonna let the rooting hormone soak in just a little bit. Then we're going to the propagation frame. We're gonna get them all put in. So here's a little tip when you're propagating. When you're doing a lot like I am now, get you a bucket of water, take your cutting, put it down in the water. It'll keep it from uh, drying out while you're getting everything ready use for the propagation frame these are rough cut oak two by eights i believe i just stacked them on top and put the soil inside and then i have a clear glass that goes over it now it is under the shade trees so it gets plenty of skylight but no direct sun so that's we're gonna go through here and get them all stuck Now what we're gonna do is just stick them, stick them down in there deep.
All right, so we had 87 cuttings. So that's what they look like. Now the next steps, we're gonna put the clear glass over the top. Now this is just an old window. And I've got to clean it because it's, it's sitting out here with sa the sap on it. But we're just going to put that on it. It will stay on it. And you will see after a while, the humidity start to build up in it. This is only going to come off if we need to check something or we need to add water. And we're only going to water as we're needed. All right, so that's what it takes so far to get to this point. Um, we're just going to let them be. It'll take several weeks, probably four to six weeks, somewhere in that neighborhood. They'll start rooting in. Uh, they, these plants will stay in this propagation frame probably until late summer, and they should have a good root system. Then we'll up pot them into the gallon pots where they will spend the winter. So we'll check back when we got something happening, and you we'll pull one up and uh, check it and see let you see what the roots look like. Guys, it's been about five, five and a half weeks since you've seen us take all these cuttings. And if you look right here on some of these, you can see the new growth coming on, and that's a good sign. So what we're going to All right, we're going to pull one up and see where we're at. This in here has got a lot of good growth on it. So we're going to pull it up and see. Yep. That one there has good roots form. So what we're going to do at this point is we will leave these in here right where they're at probably for another two to three months before we up pot them. All right, guys, once you up pot into these pots, this is where they'll stay up until next year. We did these this time last year, and these are rooted into these tray gallon pots and ready to go in the landscape. So get out there and start propagating. Now I'm going to give you a word of caution before you start propagating your own plants. Some plants are under patent. Just do a quick search. You can figure out what plants are and are not. Like you see these hydrangeas here and the oak leaf hydrangeas behind us, they're not under patent. We, pat we propagate those and we do the PG hydrangeas. That's the three that we do around here that we try to cover this landscape with. So do your research before you get started. All right, guys, that's how easy it is to do it. It takes a few months, and what you propagate this year, you will be able to put in your landscape next year. And if you do this every year, you will have a constant supply of plants for your landscape. So give it a try. Uh, we couldn't do what we're doing here if I couldn't propagate these plants. Guys, thanks for watching, and as always, if you grow it, you know it.